seven or eight years ago when the craft beer channel was in its infancy but starting to be like oh crap this is becoming a thing mm. i would have said to people that the uk made beer as good as america but we just didn't have the strength and depth and i think i kind of believed that for way too long yeah <laughs> Hey Beer Geeks, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Today we're going to be talking about some breweries that don't get the love that they deserve. And maybe why they should, and maybe why they don't. Yeah, absolutely. So I went online a couple of weeks ago and asked our Discord forum, Twitter, Instagram, for your favourite underrated breweries. And we got hundreds of responses. I've gone through that, I've picked out all of my favourites from the UK, as well as some of my own favourite breweries, and we've got them here on the table. Now I'm not trying to say that these are the UK's most underrated breweries, just that they're a fun selection from all over the UK that do different things and that really deserve a lot more love than they get. So we're going to start with a brewery called McColl's, which I would say is probably my favourite discovery of last year. I'm pretty late on McColl's, mm. but I think up in up in County Durham and, and Newcastle and places like that, they know about McColl's. Right, okay. we're, we're late to this particular part. So it's like a local legend of a beer. I think so. I think so. Right. Just well known. Like a hidden gem is probably what they'd say on uh, Time Out or something. A, a northern little gemstone. Eh? Tiny powerhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tiny powerhouse. All the cliches. Um, so, yeah, McColl's. So they're from County Durham. Their tagline is easy drinking beer. I love it. I think you're about to find out is... Yeah. It's nice. fundamental to what, what they make. Nice glass, Johnny. This is also the reason I've picked this beer is because it's it's basically, it says hoppy pale beer. Mm. They spelt beer differently, just to kind of nod to the fact that it's it's not really pale ale. It's a Saison, mate. It does smell a bit, a little bit spicy. Mm. So it's got a kind of, I mean, I would say it's the UK's Taris Balder. And mm. any any Taris Balder lover or most brewers in the world will know that is high praise indeed. But it's a hoppy... Session strength saison. There's white pepper, little hints of banana and rosemary, and a kind of maybe cascadey kind of grapefruit thing as well. It's bang dry, almost finishes like a mm. almost like a session IPA. It's got that level of kind of um, sort of dry hop, powdery character to it. It's quite nice, Johnny. <laughs> it is easy drinking. I think the tagline's quite good. Yeah, I mean, you just you just expect to say something to be a little bit challenging. Mm. You know, big, big, heady aromas. This one's the opposite. It's, it's like light. lemon barley kind of vibes with, mm. with pepper and grapefruit and banana and little things popping off of it. It's just Can't a really nice, nuanced but incredibly crushable beer. Why do you think this brewery's overlooked? <sighs> It's a tricky they're, they're, one. They're eight years old, you know. None of these breweries are brand new. These are not breweries that sort of haven't come onto the radar yet. The, the radar scanned them and missed. Yeah. It's tricky. I mean, it's so hard to make a sort of stand out on the shelf, I think. They're nice looking and like this die cut thing is nice as well. Quite expensive to do that with labels. Um, I like the logo. The logo's good with the sort of rolling hills. I, I don't know, Johnny, why. Is it the styles? I mean, they make. Do you think it could be the stars? They yeah. do not make a hazy IPA. You know, that's. Uh, I mean, this is the thing. Let's say that's always going to slow you down a bit as a brewery. Yeah, I think that probably is maybe their their stumbling point. Then is that they they don't want to just go with the trends yeah. potentially. And I, you know, I I love hazy IPA, but it's not yeah. easy drinking beer. No, it's big and it's bold and it's fun. I mean, these are the sort of beers that you could you know you could imagine them slotting into your regular sort of beer routine and like wanting to drink them on a Saturday. At a barbecue. Yeah, world class fridge fillers. They're, yeah, like yeah. amazing fridge, but beers yeah. that you want to drink yeah. all the time. Yeah. There's never a moment where, like, oh, I don't fancy that. No. So I think it's really hard to be a small independent brewery making beers like that without having a marketing budget behind it. Yeah, yeah. To necessarily go, you need to try this and maybe making it at a, or getting in front of people at a price point yeah. that's, that, that will make it go mainstream. Yeah, because easy it deserves... drinking beer. Come, has to come at a price point because you're drinking pints yeah. of it. Um, and also, yeah, if you're not going to make the kind of beers that are going to blow up on Instagram, you need, like you say, that marketing budget behind to sort of yeah. push you forwards. But that's not to say none of these brews, as far as I'm aware, are struggling. No. And no. I know we have bad form for that, a certain video that we filmed in November of a brewery that then went bust. But as far as I know, these brews are doing fine. You know, this yeah. isn't sort of charity case support these brews. It's just no, like, no. go drink at these brews because they're good. That's fantastic. Um, they're both fantastic beers. Like, I really want to go there now. In the summertime, yeah. on the couple of days a year, it's probably not raining there. So McCall's eight years under the radar. Yeah. Salopian. Yeah. From Shrewsbury. Yeah. Nearly thirty years under the radar. One of the original 
you know, when American hops first started coming to the UK, exciting American hops in the 90s, mm. We think of like maybe Dark Stars ninety two. This is ninety five. Ninety five. And they have continued to make incredible American hopped cask ale for thirty years, and quite recently got into making more diverse, exciting modern craft beer, and have done an absolutely stellar job on that as well. But I consider like Darwin's Origin their sort of cask IPA is one of my favourite cask ales, but I don't see it enough. So to give a bit of context, nineteen ninety five, Johnny. Yeah. Uh, Nirvana were like top in the charts, but Kurt Cobain had killed himself a year before. Yeah. Did uh, he no, that's not. Whoa. <laughs> we're not going there. But like, this was like, this is the like cool 90s. Yeah. Like grunge and Radiohead were big. Yeah. All we're this big, yeah. college rock sort of stuff was going on. And these guys were already banging out. There, there is a kind of mid 90s vibe even to this. A sort of grungy. Yeah. I was saying, this reminds me a lot, the graphic design of uh, Underworld. I don't know if anyone, remember, anyone remembers Underworld, the band, like Born yeah. Slippy. Lager, Lager, Lager. Lager, no, Lager, Lager. No Lagers from them yeah, today. Yeah, the guy uh, was a designer, Tomato Design Studio, and everything was like black and white like this. And this this has a kind of real, yeah, kind of like 90s look, which I guess is coming back. It is, yeah. Yeah, to see what the kids are wearing. Yeah. Very much 90s. This beer, right? Uh, Galaxy, Mosaic and Centennial. Wow. So a real mix of uh, of ages there. Big, bold, roasted character for a black IPA. Clearly, Salopian are like, we don't buy this whole, it should look black, but not taste black. It's just, it's got loads of coffee and kind of cherry and almost like nutty, almost coconutty vibes. Yeah. And then, which Galaxy can occasionally give me, but then otherwise, there's lovely kind of rich, dank pine trees, basically, is what I'm getting from this, which is either the Centennial Galaxy at its darkest. Not much mosaic going on. No. Don't expect any juice coming to this beer. No, there's not a lot of juice. That is, it's a really indulgent, kind of like multi-layered beer. Yeah. Um, I Complex mean, and elements of smoke and leather on the finish. It's just, yeah. it's dark and it's naughty and it's hoppy and bitter, but it's also all about those, those malts. And you can mm. see, you know, this kind of beer comes from somebody with a, a cask background where you, you always want a kind of robust, rich maltiness in there because that's what cask is so good at yeah but they've thrown a ton of hops which is also in their heritage and a ton of exciting hops at it to give nuance and structure so it's, it's a excitement. it's a black ipa johnny it's a black ipa which is not like the trendiest beer star in the world let's right okay that, i can see where you're going with that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so i would say you know i mean that is amazing i can't remember the last time i drank a black ipa for a start or saw one on a board in a pub or at a brewery. Yeah, you can see that these styles are never going to get lots of hype. You could also say that I bet Salopian were extremely popular in like the late 90s yeah. when that whole scene was was taking off. But it is quite difficult to sort of turn a ship brand-wise. It's why you see a lot of cask ale breweries go like, well, if we're going to do craft... Mo I hate that, do mm. craft. Cask is craft. If we're going to do modern American-influenced beer, we have to stick it in can and give it an entirely different look. And some people might be like, oh, that's a silly move. But yeah. it makes a lot of sense because people that love Darwin's Origin aren't necessarily going to love a Galaxy yeah. Mosaic Centennial Black IPA. Yeah. So don't sleep on Slopian. No. They're making amazing cask and they're making amazing modern stuff. And if you love Black IPA, and I know there's a lot of our viewers that do, uh, go to go to Salop. So as I said, I tried to spread this out geographically within the UK. Yeah. And now we're off to North Wales. Ah, oh, what a beautiful part of the world, Charlie. Well, I did know. Ah. I've been practicing all morning, probably still got it wrong. Take me home. Have I ever told you I'm Welsh, Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> You've told me you're Irish multiple uh, yeah. times. I claim lots of heritage, but yeah. <laughs> I reckon I'm Welsh. My name's Evan, so, you know, Welsh, probably. <laughs> so this is an export stout from North Wales, from Wild Horse, who are, full, full disclosure, one of our Patreons. They are. So we have to make that clear. Thank you. There may be some bias. But bless you, thank you very much. Please uh, join our pro, pro Patreon if you would like your logo at the start of all of our videos. Seamless, yeah. Um, so 2015, these guys, nine years old. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. 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 Milk chocolate. <sighs> Man, that's... Malted biscuits. That's floating my boat. Going to invade... Some pine needles. I'm going to invade uh, a Welsh castle, <laughs> I think, at this point. I think that Wild Horse are on a farm. They're on a farm. Inv invade the farm. Great. Yeah. Easier than a castle. Exactly no walls. That. Now, no walls. <laughs> yeah, easier. Just fences or hedges. Fences, yeah. yeah. Um, so Wild Horse, I would say, sort of, philosophy-wise, are quite similar to McColl's. Like, yeah. 
easy drinking beer. This is not a great example of easy drinking styles, but it is an easy drinking beer. Yeah. But they make they have a great lager in Buckskin and a great Session IPA. Um, and an amazing, amazing West Coast Pills, mm. which we haven't talked about as a style on the channel, but we will soon. Um, and I mean, yeah, just get your chops around this. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. Milk chocolate, multi biscuits, little kind of mm -hmm. little kind of red berry cranberry kind of thing, just adding a little bit of acidity. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that really fruity chocolatey sort yeah. of dash to it. Yeah, 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 really fruity dark chocolate. It's yeah, like just, it fruity coffee. It feels fruity like it's got chocolate, chocolate in it. Yeah, and it doesn't. That's it's amazing. so good. It's real good. It, it, it's absolutely one of my favourite like big <sighs> dark beers that I've had in a long time outside mm. in the pastry world. I just think it's absolutely stellar. And everything I've had from Wild Horse has been brilliant, clean, very, very easy drinking, whatever the strength of it. Mm. Just fantastic farm brewed beer in North Wales. What's not to like, Johnny? There, there was a time, honestly, there was a time three or four years ago where if somebody said, what Welsh breweries do you love? Yeah. I'd have really struggled. But particularly North Wales, you've got Geipel as well up there making mm. amazing German style beer. What, why do you think they might have been overlooked? Other than, the, I mean, the location must play a part. Yeah, you I, don't have that tap room marketing if it's not, you know, it's mostly for local people. The logo is a lovely hand-drawn horsey, mm. Johnny, which is very, very evocative of, yeah. of where they're from, I think. Um, they've got lovely sort of textural labels there. Someone spent a lot of time doing it. All I would say is maybe they're quite muted. The colourings. Um, the colourings are yeah. a little bit muted. It does kind of suit the character. Certainly these two breweries, you know, they've both got kind of muted, understated... Yeah. labels and they make understated very drinkable that's true beer. so if it was all like bright labels and craziness there'd be a sort of uh, a cognitive dissonance between the beer that's in the can and yeah the the, the 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 labels that are advertising it so it's you know all of these things have to feed into each other yeah and, yeah, and yeah. that can make it more challenging yes i guess yeah so back across the welsh border and to macclesfield just outside of manchester nice yeah uh, and this is red willow yes now red willow i think are one of those businesses one of those breweries that are a bit bigger than you think they are okay and make significantly better beer than you might think they do like properly special unusual beer bigger than i think they are but also better than I bigger think and are. better than you could ever have thought that's a good combo and you don't really know it until you go to either their tap room in buxton which is a beautiful old bank i think buxton's a great place isn't it anyway, buxton's a beautiful place in general, what a lovely yeah. place yeah um so yeah, you could either go there or you could go onto their web shop and see the incredible car scale, well, traditional British beers, traditionally made German style uh, lagers and big old ridiculous beer, including wild fermentations. So how, this How is long have they been going for, Johnny? Uh, 2010. So 14, hell, okay. 14 years they've wow. been going. Oh yeah. Um, and this kind of brings together their love of lager and their love of wild ales. And this is a food lager. So essentially what an American might call a breaded pilsner or something. So gorgeous, like almost kind of lambic level of bread and just a little hint of acidity as well, a kind of almost um, pineapple-y thing, which is probably the bread again, rather than actual acidity. Mm. Smells kind of funky pineapple yeah. and bread. Yeah, what a combo. It smells really, really nice. Oh yeah, so that bread is 100% providing that pineapple there's no acidity to that no it's just all lovely slightly funky but muted candied pineapple bread hmm. on top of a, a bready jacobs crackery base oh my that's drinkable <sighs> my my that is really good isn't it if, if i wanted if somebody said that i hate brett i'd give them this beer and go so wait you hate dried pineapple <laughs> dude i think it's there's there's something akin to um the, the New Zealand pills there, well, that's that's a real limey lager. Limey boy. A limey boy. And that's a real pineapple-y, slightly little funky guy. Mm -hmm. And there's there's something quite nice about that in lager. Something which, you know, it's the most drinkable drink, but giving it a little edge, a little bit of a different edge. Yeah. I love that both these guys are doing that. Yeah. You know, it's the kind of characterful, nuanced beer with the kind of unusual flavours that now... For better or for worse, a lot of brewers have started taking shortcuts to. You yeah. Know, there's a lot of brewers yeah. out there that would make a pineapple lager or a peach lager. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think there's one in quite a big one now in um, Sainsbury's or Tesco at the moment. Like, why would you put it in a fooder for six months and 
take all that care when you could just add pineapple? And the reason is because this is 20 times better. Yes. But is, is it therefore worth 20 times as much? Sadly, not. Um, and yeah, I mean, if I could change one thing about the industry, it wouldn't be to like have fewer New England IPAs. It wouldn't be to have fewer pastry stouts. It would have equal love for the madcap stuff that some people are doing and the yeah, incredibly yeah, yeah. nuanced, long-winded approaches that others are doing. And unfortunately, they don't get the same billing. You can see this one here. They've got the barrels on there as well. Mm. So they're, they're obviously all about celebrating the process and geeking out on that as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you Which, see that across their own. It's why they love yeah. traditional cars, traditional lagers and mixed fermentation stuff because it's all about yeah. that communication and doing things properly. And I think that, that's what Red Willow do. Um, but that doesn't always get you the plaudits. It's it's hard when there are people that are just doing like stick a bit of pineapple on it. Mm -hmm. So now we move on to the only brewery on here where I think it might be fair to say like people might be like, no, we we hype fierce, we know fierce. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I think that of all the you know the breweries that are on like the the hypey festival circuit, you know, fierce are at all of the big festivals. Yeah. They still don't get, I think, the love that they deserve on the level that lots of other breweries that are no better than them yeah. get. Yeah. You don't see cues, I think, at Fierce at beer festivals, but when Very Big Moose comes on, which is probably their hypiest beer, it's their big Imperial Stout they do lots of different versions of, including mm -hmm. a peanut butter one, if that's mm. your persuasion, um, you might get a cue for this, because this beer is about to blow your face off. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so much dark course. beer in this lineup. Yeah, though. well, I mean, I also I love dark beer. We don't get to talk about it we enough don't. on the channel. Yeah. So I've, I've I've loaded it. We could have had the West Coast IPA, which is yeah. well, they've called it a retro okay. IPA. But we should we should say these guys make a, a, like loads of different beers, yeah. loads of different styles. Well, that is the main reason why I also <clears> put them on as well. Over a couple of brews that could have been on there. So I picked rum for you. I know you love rum. Yeah. Dark rum. It smells pokey, Johnny. It smells like caramelized apples, boozy rum, raisins and chocolate. Wow. And big oak and vanilla. Yeah. Silky smooth, sweet. It's got that kind of banana and Coca-Cola thing that JD and Coke has. But it's quite nice and dry. It's not too sickly. Banana and Coca-Cola. What a combo. That's something I'd never thought would uh, well, When, when you have together, JD and though. Coke, do you not get like banana Coca-Cola? That's um, what it tastes like to me. Really? What, like, yeah. it's got like an estuary banana yeah. type thing going on? How interesting. I guess I've never really thought, I get more of a vanilla -y thing, maybe. I was just a real chore to go for drinks with, even as an 18 year old drink. Yeah, it sounds like Coke, it. Sorry. I don't want to get banana from this. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of their big release every year that comes on top of Mexican lagers. Yeah. Great retro IPAs, West, um, juicy IPAs, really. Over the weekend, I was drinking um, drinking some of their session sort of hazy beers as well. It's all beautifully made. They do quite a bit of contract brewing as well. Like they make a lot of the mash gang beers and stuff. So they're oh, really? doing solids yeah. for everybody else. They just make, you know, the most sort of professional, beautifully made, structured yeah. Yeah. beers in the hype styles. And because because they're structuring them, because, uh, you know, this beer isn't finishing at like 1050 or 1060, it's not getting the hype. Mm -hmm. But I think Fierce, are, they're kind of one of those breweries that other brewers and people in the industry really like. A bit of a brewer's brewer, and that's why they're at all the festivals. But consumers are sleeping on them a little bit. So, I mean, if you know, from a sort of shelf appeal point of view, I'd say this is a little bit old fashioned. Yep. In its branding, it's a bit generic. Well, I think they're trying to play off like the, the cask bourbon and cask whiskey. Yeah, I guess it's a bit of a sort of heritage Rich carpets sort of stuff. and armchairs. And exactly, yeah. It's got a bit sides. of gold, fireside, yeah. yeah. It's got all that kind of stuff going on. This one is, I mean, I like this, but it's, it is a little bit Brewdog 1.0 mm. when they were look, they looked a little bit like a snowboarding brand. Yeah. In that it's got the kind of shocking pink. They have, I mean, that is almost the Brewdog blue. Um, it's an issue, because Fierce, I think and it's totally not their fault, have lived in the shadow yeah. of Brewdog because yeah. the Scottish brewery dominates yeah. every conversation about Scottish beer to such a detriment it hurts me. And yeah, I would be branding myself to yeah. be as different I'd try and as I possibly try and move can. away from that as much as possible. Yeah. I feel like they're not, they're not hanging off of it at all because Brewdog have gone in a slightly different direction. <laughs> but this, this feels a little bit like that earlier Brewdog stuff, which was a little bit punkier... It's got lots of like half-tone textures and bright colours and 
cut and paste text and all this kind of stuff. A little bit punk inspired. Very fanzine kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's Jamie Reed, Sex Pistols sort of vibes going on, um, which, you know, has its place. But I think they are kind of like, as you say, in the shadow of Brewdog mm. a little bit. So they very much should potentially move away as much as they can visually from that. So not, none of these points that I've made aesthetically, I'm not trying to be rude to any of these breweries or anything like that. It's just like, how do they differentiate themselves a little bit more in the market? But we're just trying to work out why they haven't yeah. hit the highs that they deserve exactly. to. And may, maybe design is part of it, maybe the beers that they're brewing, maybe, yeah. you know, literally in Salopian's case, you know, the time they founded, which they can't help. No. You know? No, no, no. So it, you know, what's interesting is, you know, we're, we're talking about why are these people not necessarily, you know, being hyped up. Yeah. But to be hyped, they'd have to make compromises and everything that they are. So I wouldn't necessarily advise anybody changes anything. Seven or eight years ago, when the Craft Beer Channel was in its infancy, but starting to be like, oh crap, this is becoming a thing. Mm. I would have said to people that the UK made beer as good as America, but we just didn't have the strength and depth. And I think I kind of believed that for way too long. Yeah. Like the UK caught up really, really quickly. And I forgot, and I'm still endlessly surprised when I dig that next layer down to breweries that people locally might go, I love this brewery, but nobody talks about it. As soon as you dig into that, there's world-class beer there as well. I guess the, the sort of the difference between the UK and America as well, like a lot of American breweries are very uh, local and that they can only sell in their own state and all this kind of stuff. So they they get like a hometown hype. Yeah. Which I think that we don't really get like a hometown hype over here as much as we should. No, because we can get all the hype breweries delivered get to it. us. We can go, right, so we'll easy. have that one from yeah. Wales. We'll have that one from Scotland. Whatever we want, you can get it, right? Yeah. So you're not, it's not like... That's so true, yeah. We have two and a half, just shy of two and a half thousand breweries and we can get them all delivered to our house. Yeah. You know, that, that makes getting your voice heard incredibly hard. Yeah. Anyway... Those are our favourite unhyped breweries. We'd love this to become a resource, this video. So please, your locals, your favourites or breweries you think people are sleeping on, um, put them in the comments and then everybody that's watching this late, further down the line can go and see if there's something that they can get hold of that's amazing. Um, we both picked up, <laughs> both picked up lagers. Uh, that's, that's about true to type. Um, so the breweries that are making it work, even without making hazy IPA. Cheers. Cheers.